In the previous lesson, you were introduced to array variables in C Sharp. In the next lesson, after this one, we'll take a closer look at them. You'll see some different ways you can declare and initialize an array. And you'll get some practice at working with the data items stored in an array. But before we do anything else, I'd like to show you some of Visual Studio's debugging tools. Let's see how to execute a program one instruction at a time. This can be incredibly useful when you're testing a program because it allows you to follow the execution path and to see how the contents of variables change while your program is running. In the previous lesson, you saw how to declare an array of string values like this. By the way, an array can't contain a mixture of data types. Each item in this array must be a string because I said so in my declaration. This block of code is initializing the array, and I can output the value in an element like this. Or like this. And I can iterate through the items in the array like this. To step through my program one instruction at a time, I can set a breakpoint. I do this by clicking on the grey bar wherever I want the execution to pause. My program is going to run at full speed until it hits the breakpoint, and then I can step through it. I'm now in what's called break mode. The line in yellow hasn't executed yet. I'm being shown which line will execute next. To step through the code, I can use this button, step into. Notice I can also use function key F11. By repeatedly clicking the button, I'm executing my program one line at a time. Notice that while I'm in break mode, I have a window down here entitled Locals. This is showing me all of the local variables in this subprocedure. I can see a few other things in the window, which you'll understand better when you get more advanced. But for now, notice I can see i, which currently has a value of 0, and I can see the array fruit. This little triangle will expand it out. Notice that so far most of the elements have been initialized, but element 8 and 9 haven't yet because those two lines of code haven't executed. I'll keep stepping. I can watch the contents of those variables while the program is running, in slow motion. If there's some output, then I need to interact with the user interface. But the program will continue in break mode. i now has a value of 1, as I can see in the locals window. I can also move my mouse cursor over that variable within the code and see its content. I find this particularly useful. As I continue to step, I can see the loop executing, and I can see the decisions being made while it does. i is about to be incremented. Then we test the value of i to make sure it's still less than 10, and the loop continues. If I'm finished with debug mode, I don't have to step through to the end of the program. I can just press continue, and the program will finish at full speed. Another useful window, which you can use when you're in break mode, is the so-called watch window. I'm just going to move the breakpoint first. Click it again to switch it off and then click on the grey bar to put a breakpoint somewhere else. You can actually have as many breakpoints as you like. Run the program. 
it's stopped just before we start initializing the array. And of course the array doesn't contain anything yet. I can switch on the watch window from the debug menu. Debug, Windows, Watch. In fact, I can have four watch windows if I want. The watch window allows me to say which variables I want to keep track of. I just type their name. So that's the name of the array, and I'd like to watch I as well. Start stepping, and I can watch that array variable being populated without all the unnecessary clutter. Before continuing, I suggest you get a bit of practice with these debugging facilities. Try stepping through a program that contains an if construct and watch the execution path change depending on the outcome of a test. Also, try stepping through a program containing a loop. It's well worth getting to know this particular feature of the Visual Studio IDE. There'll be times when you find it invaluable. 